So this is the Turbulent Turbine, created by Turbulent Hydro, a Belgian company who say that it's really easy to install, it doesn't really disturb the environment, it's fish friendly, uses a very low fall of water and can produce energy 24-7 even a small one being enough for something like 300 homes. It looks superb. So I was thinking about replicating a mini version of that Belgian turbine with one of these. So I've taken a bit of Perspex, drilled a hole through it and screwed the fan to it. And I've already adapted this to a generator and I've done a video on that before. Now the water I want to run in this direction to hint those fan blades like that. So I need a channel coming down there and then an involute to capture that water just like the Belgians did and send it spinning around there. Now to cut the involute, what I'm going to do is use a bit of aluminium and we'll glue it to that. So let's cut some aluminium and put a, uh, a scroll on it. Let's make it roundish. All I've done is glued this involute on with hot glue. Now the idea is that the water enters here, comes down there and creates a vortex as it's forced around that spiral. Because as it's vortexing, it should then go through the fan. But the direction of the vortex is in the same direction as the fan blades. So what we need to do now with it is put some water in at this end and see if it'll spin. If you remember the videos around 1141, we made a wind turbine called the Rose because it, it looked like a rose. I actually gathered the videos concerning the Rose into an omnibus edition and it's on TNT Omnibus video number 17 and the link to that is in the channel. The original videos have been moved to the members archive. So if you remember, you can search out the archive. If you want to have a look at the omnibus which gives you the details of the Rose, it's over on the omnibus channel. But there's one sort of problemette with it. If you remember the Rose, it had a conical section in the uh, centre, then there were the rose petals radiating out and it had a flat back plane. Now we're going to be dealing with water and water's much heavier, more viscous than air. So when the air hits that back plane, I don't think there's a real issue there particularly, but if the water hits it, then I think there's going to be an issue. So I'm going to do a slight adaptation to the rose and that is to make the cone big enough that the uh, rose petals go all the way around the cone, so there is no flat back plane. And I'm obviously not going to make a huge one, so I cut out some petals, and the way I cut these is described in 1141, etc. So I cut out the rose petals, and I cut out a cone, so that the bottom of this cone is 100 millimeters. And the rose petals are going to wrap around the cone. So I've bent one up here already, and they're going to go like that, so we no longer have a back plane. Now I'm going to fit those petals to the rows. <coughs> okay, so I've taken the centre, snapped all the blades off and glued it to the bottom. So that's the centre piece of a fan glued onto a minute rose turbine. Of course, we're going to put it back on. There we go, ready to go. Now, when I look at this, I immediately think, hang on a second, the rose turbine works well in the wind. How is this going to work in the wind? I mean, we are going to put it in water, but let's see how it does in the wind first. Well, it definitely spins in the wind, that's kind of cool. Now, I'm going to use a hairdryer and there's no chance this will spin. If I put the hairdryer about here, this is not spinning at all. But this will spin, which is, I suppose, no surprise. It's slightly bigger and flared out, but it will spin. Point six of a volt, something like that. If I try and get a reading out of this, I'm getting about 0.7 of a meter per second. So I only really did that because it was suggested to me to try, some, try the rose turbine in a vortex or water vortex, which is what I'm setting up to do. But as soon as I had everything together, I couldn't resist trying it in the wind. And I thought that was quite a surprising and gratifying result, actually. That it works really well if you stick this modified rose onto a PC fan, you'll actually get pretty reasonable generation out of it. Anyway. I thought I'd do that because I thought it was of interest, but the next one is obviously to get the vortex on it. 
So I remade the involuta, a bit of builder's board and a strip of plastic. So the same thing's going to happen. Water comes down this channel, goes round the involute, creates the spin. And then the rose gets fitted under there like that. And as you can see, the spin of the water then should hit those fans and make it generate. So let's attach the rose under there. And there it is. Finished. Actually, it was really easy to make this. Hey, so like I say, it's a bit of builder's board, then a strip of plastic bent round into this involute, leading to the opening there where the uh, rose is. So okay, so I'm going to pour a bit of water in here, and we'll see if the rose will spin. So when you look at the Belgian design, you notice that the hole that opens up into the turbine is as big as the turbine blades. And that's pretty much what this does. It copies the involute, copies the hole, and it makes me wonder, is that hole the right size? Particularly with something like the rose, could we do better, say, if we had a smaller hole? So instead of having the water rushing on here, if we had it coming on here and then we'd have to flow around the blades, would it do any better? So I quickly knocked up this little variant here where I've drilled the hole there so I can move the rose position so that it's either a top dead centre or to one side. And that's my reservoir and of course as it flows down it is going to create a vortex anyway because it's like emptying your bath. So I've got this adaptation here. We'll take the rose, we'll put it back in there and we'll give it another go. Now, I thought it worked better like that, actually. Incidentally, uh, I do bang on about measuring volts and amps, and you notice I'm only measuring the volts. And actually, the reason for that is these PC fans, hey? PC fans of generators have been um, researched a tremendous amount. We're not actually looking at what the PC fan will do. We're looking to see what changes we can make to the rose configuration to get a better result. And of course, there's a, a relationship between speed and voltage. So the faster this turns for a given flow of water, the harder the voltage is going to be. So we're getting an idea of what the generation is. So at the moment, it's not exactly applicable to anything outside, but as an internal measure, it's certainly giving us an idea of how the rose is performing. But I think that's quite quite a decent performance actually. I also suspect that if we put a jet of water like a Pelton wheel on it, we'd also get it to turn. And I love to know if we stuck it in the waves, would the waves washing across it make it turn one way and the other? That would be kind of interesting to see, I think. Anyway, quite a lot to do with this. I've enjoyed doing it so far, even though it is some, somewhat wet and messy. It's been quite a lot of fun. Uh, and I hope you're enjoying it too. Uh, and somebody did actually mention that this would make a great community project. If, if other people wanted to work on it, then all the information is there on the YouTube channel to reproduce this stuff. And it'd be awesome if you gave it a go and let me know how well you did. So thank you very much for watching the videos. Hope you enjoyed it and please remember to like and subscribe.